Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Good Morning with me, Misty B. Now guys, I have a question for you. How many of you had a few financial struggles during 2020? Be honest with yourself. I'm gonna be very honest and say I was one of those people. It started off really, really good and then towards the end of the year, I was like, huh, I have no money. <laughs> definitely was not a good feeling for someone who is somewhat of a control freak and I'm definitely used to having things under control. Today, I want you guys to pay close attention. Our guest is a financial advisor and a financial designer. She will design your finances according to a plan that works for you. Her name is Sonia Truye. Now guys, I want you to stay tuned because this is gonna be really, really good. And hopefully we won't never see another COVID again, but just in case. I'm gonna be right back with Sonia right after this break. Stay tuned, grab your pen and your paper. Confidence comes standard with a certified pre-owned Cadillac from Ron Carter Cadillac. Your only Houston area Cadillac to your door dealer. Get 2.9% APR for 72 months on Houston's largest certified pre-owned Cadillac inventory. With the assurance of a 172-point inspection, meticulous reconditioning by master Cadillac technicians, and a total five-year limited warranty with unlimited miles. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter Cadillac. My prenatal promise is to make sure my baby is safe and healthy. Because I know it is possible to acquire syphilis, HIV, or other STDs without knowing it, getting tested is my very first chance to protect my baby. Doctors are required to give expectant mothers three separate tests for syphilis. If you're pregnant, ask your doctor if you're being tested properly for syphilis and other STDs. Congenital syphilis can lead to a miscarriage, stillbirth, or an infant death. Don't risk your baby's health. To find out more, visit MyPrenatalPromise.com. Yeah. Oh boy. I'm going old school on his butt. Let's play a game. I'm, I'm a savage. Come on. Whoa. Hey, any, I, I, I let him uh, still attach. Ooh, everybody right. I got it. I got it. Ooh, oh, she got me. Classy, bougie, fresh. <laughs> Granny's out here having a martini at halftime. Haters gonna hate. Space Jam, yeah. July 16th. Welcome back everyone. Now let's be honest, a lot of us had some financial issues during 2020. You know, COVID kinda <laughs> took all of us out. And I don't know if we could have did enough planning to save us, but you know what, just in case. Today in the studio, I have a financial advisor and designer, Miss Sonia Truye. Sonia. Hi. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me today. You know, then let's talk about a financial designer. I like that name. What is a financial designer? Well, as a financial designer, we design a comprehensive financial plan for our clients. Okay. So if I make $30,000 a year, you can create a plan for me? Well, more of a modular plan, yes. Okay. No matter who you are, you have to save money for retirement. You have to. You have to, or whatever your goals and objectives are. Okay. And your business is the Comprehensive Financial Design Group. Absolutely. What made you decide to start this business? Well, I've been in the business for 22 years, okay. which has been an amazing journey. And an opportunity, been knocking on my door for about eight years. Okay. I leaped into it and we decided to open our own office awesome. right in the midst of COVID. Oh, wow. So you just opened in 2020? Yes. Awesome. Okay. May of 2020. May 4th. You know what? I know, you know, everybody has these bad and negative connotations with COVID, but some good things really did come out of COVID and you're a prime example. Absolutely. Absolutely. Money has to continue to move. It does. Let me ask you this. Were you that kid with a calculator? Like, did you always love numbers? Absolutely not. Really? No. No, my degree is in microbiology and chemistry. I have a double major. So what was the transition? Well, I was in pharmaceutical sales after a career with UT Medical School. We won't even talk about that. As a researcher, my um, sister's best friend, mm -hmm. Cheryl Cruzo, I mentioned her. She was my mentor. Okay. She had been in the business for over 26 years and decided 
to purchase her mentor's firm from her mm -hmm. and ask me if I wanted to come over and work with her. I was like, absolutely not. What did I know about financial planning? Mm -hmm. I started my personal financial planning when I was 30 only because she kept bugging me about it. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity came around. I jumped at it and it's been an amazing transition. I've changed people's lives forever. Really? I like that. Forever. You're a magician? For Kinda. I like that. Yeah. So let's talk about debt. You know, we hear the word debt and we automatically assume that debt is a negative word. Is debt a bad word? Debt is not necessarily a bad word. Okay. There's two types of debt. Toxic debt and non-toxic debt. Okay, tell me the difference. Okay, this is toxic, the first time I've ever heard this. Okay, toxic, well, let's start with non-toxic debt. Okay. Non-toxic debt is debt that helped you become, move forward in the future and was a positive enforce, such as school loans, okay. mortgages, mm -hmm. car notes, and reasonable cars, and maybe real estate loans. Okay. Non-toxic debt is debt that- Wait, wait, um, wait, I thought that was non-toxic debt. No, that was toxic. Yeah, okay. That was non-toxic, okay. I'm sorry. Toxic debt is debt that immediately decreases in value. Give me an example. Um, credit card debt. Okay. We look at credit card debt and look at the interest rate. If the interest rates are higher than we can make in the market, it's absolutely a toxic, a toxic debt. Okay. Anything else besides a credit card that's credit toxic card, debt? Credit um, card, bail loans, bail, what is it, bail? When you go to jail and you oh. have to get those loans, the um, payday loans are toxic debt, and very high interest rates on credit cards are toxic debt. Okay, but everything else, so even the student loans, because you know. Student loans got you to where you are today. Right? Is that a good thing? Yes. Credit, gotta, card, credit cards got some of us to where we are today. Well, but yes, say you pay for food. Okay. It's gone. It's depreciating in value. You didn't have to go to the club and buy a, a section mm -hmm. on your credit card, right? That didn't get you anywhere. Those clothes are pretty, but they depreciate in value as you wear them. Okay. Anything that depreciates in value or has a high interest rate is considered toxic debt. Okay, that's considered toxic debt. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about this. So what happens when you want to pay off your student loans and you pay off your home? Well, I would recommend not to consider paying off your home or your student loans right away. Okay. There are certain things that you have to put in place. Can you tell me why? Well, because I'm thinking, let me tell you how, why I asked this. Because we're taught, pay this off as soon as it comes, right? Because you don't want the additional mm -hmm. debt. You want to have, you know, free cash flow. So why would I hold on to this debt? Well, first of all, house, houses interest rates are, are low right now, okay. 2 to 4%. Right now, the market is doing double digits. You could take that money and use it to increase the value of your wealth. Okay. All right. So a house appreciates 3% a year, correct? Okay. And your interest rate is at 4 At least last week, we were making double digits in the market. The market <laughs> has gone down a little bit right now. But you, we were making 34, 29% on money. Mm. So think about it. Your money usually doubles in seven years. Right now, it's doubling in five years. Okay, so let's talk about student loans. Why wouldn't I? So let's talk about millennials. Okay. Their student loans are averaging six, seven, eight hundred plus a month. Okay. Why wouldn't they want to pay that off completely? Well, at the end of the day, if we have another COVID, you don't have an emergency fund. You've paid off your loan. Now you don't have any money to set up an emergency fund. There's things that you can do simultaneously to secure your future. When you pass away, your student loan goes away, mm -hmm. okay? You can call the student loan company and ask them to consolidate your debt. Mm -hmm. That means decrease my interest rate. Mm -hmm. Right now they're providing interest rates at 4%. Hmm. You can make more money in the market. Hmm. Okay? So if there's another COVID, you can put money in, in an emergency fund. Now I have an emergency fund. So I don't have to worry about using my credit cards to survive. Now let me, so you mentioned COVID. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay. Sonia, I had a really pretty decent savings before COVID. Mm -hmm. Okay? I did really good for the first 11 months. Okay. 11 months. It, how many months have we had? 18 months. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I did really good for the first 11 months. And then that 12th month came <laughs> my life kind of changed. What do you do? Because we, uh, I mean, this was so unprecedented. Nobody saw this. What are some tips, some recommendations? Well, I'll give first recommendation. 
do a budget. And I, yes, I said the B word. <laughs> okay. People hate budgeting, but budgeting is very important. You need to know how much money is coming in, how much is going out, and how much surplus you have. If you don't have a surplus, we actually sit with you to find out where you're spending your money. Mm -hmm. From there, you set up an emergency fund. Fortunately, you had 11 months of emergency fund. Mm -hmm. So many people didn't have anything. But I felt so bad after those 11 months. You I should be very proud. I know, I really should, but I was like, what the crap? I have no more money left because it is a rainy day fund, yes. right? But you think you're gonna have this rainy day fund forever. It's not necessarily but true. You were so blessed to have that 11 months. Very true. So you should be very proud. Okay. Some people didn't have any money, they used their credit cards. Mm. Which, they, if they had to use your credit card, you use it. Now, work on paying that credit card off. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people didn't have food. Mm -hmm. They couldn't feed their children. But fortunately, the community stepped in. So you said work on paying that credit card off. What does that look like? What does that look like? We, we, know, we know we need to pay more than a minimum payment. We okay. all know that. So what does that look like? How do you calculate what your credit card payment should be? Okay. They provide you with the minimum payment. Mm -hmm. You put all your credit cards together, identify the highest interest rates first. Mm -hmm. Not the highest balance, but the highest interest rate. Any additional monies that you may have, put it only on the one credit card, the highest interest rate. Continue to pay the minimums on the others. Okay. When you pay that one credit card off, take what you're paying on that credit card and put it on the next credit highest interest rate credit card. Okay. So say you're paying a minimum of 30 bucks on that highest interest rate. Then you added an extra 200 bucks to that. So that's 230. Take that 230, put it on the next highest interest rate and then go from there. You would save so much money in interest payments. Okay, thank you for these tips. We're about to go to break, but we're gonna come back and talk about financial planning. Absolutely. Guys, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Sonia Truyer. Get your pens and your paper because you need to know how to plan for your future and you will not be afraid of the B word, budget. <laughs> See you in just a second. Confidence comes standard with a certified pre-owned Cadillac from Ron Carter Cadillac. Your only Houston area Cadillac to your door dealer. Get 2.9% APR for 72 months on Houston's largest certified pre-owned Cadillac inventory. With the assurance of a 172-point inspection, meticulous reconditioning by master Cadillac technicians, and a total five-year limited warranty with unlimited miles. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter Cadillac. My prenatal promise is to make sure my baby is safe and healthy. Because I know it is possible to acquire syphilis, HIV, or other STDs without knowing it. Getting tested is my very first chance to protect my baby. Doctors are required to give expectant mothers three separate tests for syphilis. If you're pregnant, ask your doctor if you're being tested properly for syphilis and other STDs. Congenital syphilis can lead to a miscarriage, stillbirth, or an infant death. Don't risk your baby's health. To find out more, visit MyPrenatalPromise.com. Welcome back everyone. Did you grab your pen and paper while we were on break? Because now we're about to dive into financial planning. Okay, Sonia, what is financial planning? Let's start there. Okay, financial planning is pulling together your budget, the B word, which is cash flow management, mm -hmm. your insurances and any investments you may have to see where you are today. Okay. And then we talk about where do you wanna be? It's all about meeting your goals on time. Okay. And there's three stages of financial planning. Okay. Okay. Very often people will come and say, hey, I got a new job. I got a promotion. I need to invest some money. But we would be remiss if we, saw, if we absolutely start investing your money without solidifying that foundation. Okay. Okay. So we have a pyramid and we look at um, dealing with the foundation. The three areas that's most important in my clients' lives okay. are, we talked about the budgeting 
emergency fund mm -hmm. and debt reduction. Okay. And then we look at um, risk management, okay. which are the disability coverage, medical coverage, um, personal property and casualty, life insurance, and long-term care. First of all, we insure everything, but we forget to insure our ability to get up every day and go to work. I was going to ask you about that. Now that's pretty profound. So that's disability coverage. That's the disability coverage. So how do you coverage. insure that? Let's 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 hit on that. There's companies that we insure based on your income, okay. which you report to the IRS. Okay. And what are you insuring again? You're insuring your ability to get up and go to work. Huh. So making money. Most companies will provide sixty or fifty percent of your income every month, mm -hmm. and it's it's. A true disability policy will last to age 65. Wow, I have never heard of this. You know, well, that's have... why you need a financial advisor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have an advisor, but it's all about investments, mm -hmm. right? I've never heard of this at all. This is is it, is it something that you that you would say we all need to have? Absolutely. If you're the only person in your household, I am bringing money in. What happens after the 11 months if you're sick? You're going to have to move in with your family. You're going to have to sell your home. Why not insure your income? But why can't I just draw from my life insurance policy? You could do that as well. But sooner or later, that life insurance policy is going to stop. Why not have somebody else pay for it? Hmm. Transfer that risk to another company. Okay. Just like medical insurance, car insurance. Insure your income. I like that. I've never insure your income. Absolutely. Okay, now how much is this going to cost a month? Because you know that's how we're going to think. Well, it depends on okay. your age. Okay, give me an average. I'm 39. Well, what it else depends you on your income. How much you make? Okay, I'll tell you that later. <laughs> and I'll tell you, so I'll tell you how much you Now, it really depends. If you get it young, it can be from 150 to $200 a month. But it's absolutely worth it. Really? Absolutely. So can I be very honest and tell you my first thought? What? That's more than my life insurance policy. Well, okay. We need to talk. All right. Um, you said you're talking about investments. If I don't know who your financial advisor is, but a true financial designer mm -hmm. will design a plan for you that incorporates all of that, solidifying that foundation. Mm -hmm. So as you are really at the stage of accumulating money, mm -hmm. there's nothing that's going to derail you. Okay. So let me ask you this. What about people who are 55? Does this disability coverage expire at that point? Not necessarily. Most companies will pay for your disability coverage. If you're employed by a company, they will pay or offer disability coverage at a very low rate, maybe $16 a month. Okay, so can we touch on something? Yes. Just for a second. You know, in our community, people think insurance is a scam, okay. right? You know mm -hmm. that's true. Back and forth, we pay car insurance, you pay this insurance, you pay that insurance. Absolutely. And then, so do I really want, do I really need this? Like, do I really, really need this? If, well, I, if I was married and had two incomes, would you still recommend it? What do you, well, you're asking me questions that are blanket for everyone. Okay. But it, when we give recommendations, it's on their particular situation. Got it. Believe it or not, most people live on both salaries. Right, they do, especially this day and age. Absolutely. So yes, you do need it. If I depend on my husband and my husband depend on me, we both need disability coverage. Hmm. And again, if your company provides it, Jump it on it. It may be sixteen to twenty dollars a month from mm -hmm. your paycheck. It's absolutely worth it. Okay, let's talk about financial independence. What does that look like? Because we think debt free, mm -hmm. right? We think that uh, I'm financial independent when I have zero debt. Is that true? No. Okay, that's a myth. Abs well, it depends if you're debt adverse. A true financial independent person will have enough money. One day will wake up and say, you know what? I don't have to go to work. I have enough money. I have an opportunity to open a business if I want All right, want let me to. take my mic off. I'm done. No, I'm joking. <laughs> We'd love right. to get there, though. Okay, hey, go it's ahead, not though. Hard. <laughs> the hardest thing about accumulating money is protecting your money. Mm -hmm. The easiest part is accumulating wealth. You make it a habit. You start young, autopiloting out of your paycheck every month. But what if you don't? What if you found out later in life and you didn't get a chance to start at 25, 26, and you're starting at 42? Okay, that's still not that late in life. Okay. You still have maybe 15 years before you retire. Mm. It may be a change of lifestyle. And it's something called delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. We don't need that Mercedes. We really don't. We don't need the Gucci clothes. We really don't. I mean, really, I don't wear a lot of diamonds. You have to figure out 
what do you like to do? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying change your life. Pick out what you really like to do. My husband and I, we like to travel. You know, I drive an American car now. You're going to see the same clothes. But my bank account is looking pretty thick. Mm -hmm. And we like to travel. Mm -hmm. So you, it all depends on your personal goals and objectives. That's why each plan that we design is based on your goals. And when do you want to be financially independent? And how much do you want to have when you're financially independent? Mm -hmm. We want to make sure you do not outlive your money. Ooh, ooh. Because what happens when you do that? Well, you may have to work at Walmart. I'm sorry. You may have to make go work at one of those stores. <laughs> You may have to work in one of those stores as a welcomer, as a greeter, okay. or go live with your children. So, <laughs> but I, these are these are authentic, authentic things. These things happen. If you notice, a lot of greeters at Walmart. Not saying that they're volunteer, but seriously, a lot of times I have a friend. She is an HR director for a school district uh, out on the outskirts of Houston, and she said to me, "I've seen so many of our retirees have to go to Walmart afterwards." Yeah. Well, it's never too late to start your financial planning. It's never too late? Never too late. Now, if you're 65 and you want to retire at 67, yeah, that's too late. That's too late. <laughs> yeah, but you may have to go change your lifestyle. Go live with your children and save all your money. Let's talk about building an emergency fund, okay? So co again, COVID- You're back at the emergency fund. I have fund. to because that last year, that was, how many people? Like, okay, let's talk about it. What do you do? Do you take a percentage of your income? So I'm a believer in paying myself first. Absolutely. That is my absolute thing. I transfer money as soon as I receive money. Very good. So what, how do you build that? Well, you identify how much emergency fund you need at first. Okay. And we recommend three to six months of mm -hmm. your essential living expenses. Okay. So say to keep my house, my water, electricity, insurances, I need $3,500 a month. Okay. All right. M multiply that by three mm -hmm. or six mm -hmm. and say, you know what? It may take me five years to get there, but I'm going to put $100 away a month in a high interest bearing money market account that you can get online. Okay. I could give you some recommendations. Goldman Sachs okay. Bank has, they will give you more than you can make in, the, in, in your regular bank. Okay, perfect. Or uh, Ally Bank. Okay, that's the online banking. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Online banking will give you maybe 0.75% to 1.2%. Your bank is giving you probably 0.0025%, but take it out every month Make it a habit. Mm -hmm. That's and, the thing. Yeah, and when you see that bank account grow, it's such a monkey off your back. It when is. you have no debt and you have an emergency fund. Sonia, we have to end up this segment, but this is good oh. because a lot of people don't know this, especially about like online banking and the yes. percentage that you can actually accrue. So thank you thank so you. much for coming in here with me and You're talking welcome. about this emergency fund. Don't make fun of me because I want to get mine back up. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much, dear. Thank uh, you. Guys, I am going to be right back after this break. I hope you guys took really, really good notes. See you in a second. Confidence comes standard with a certified pre-owned Cadillac from Ron Carter Cadillac. Your only Houston area Cadillac to your door dealer. Get 2.9% APR for 72 months on Houston's largest certified pre-owned Cadillac inventory. With the assurance of a 172-point inspection, meticulous reconditioning by master Cadillac technicians, and a total five-year limited warranty with unlimited miles. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter Cadillac. My prenatal promise is to make sure my baby is safe and healthy. Because I know it is possible to acquire syphilis, HIV, or other STDs without knowing it, getting tested is my very first chance to protect my baby. Doctors are required to give expectant mothers three separate tests for syphilis. If you're pregnant, ask your doctor if you're being tested properly for syphilis and other STDs. Congenital syphilis can lead to a miscarriage, stillbirth, or an infant death. Don't risk your baby's health. To find out more, visit MyPrenatalPromise.com.
Welcome back, ladies and gents. Did you learn a lot? I know that I did. I have never, ever thought about checking the little box for disability coverage. I always sent, thought that meant something else, you know? But here we are today. So did you learn a lot? I hope that you did. And I wanna share a story with you guys. So Sonya and I spent a lot of time talking about an emergency fund and she's gonna come back. We're gonna talk about college planning. We're gonna talk about investments and so forth and so on because there's so much that we can do to build wealth and to just increase our finances. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys. When I first started my financial plan and being really serious about it, I was so upset that I was only able to put back $100 per month. I was furious. I was like, oh, this really isn't going to do anything. This isn't a lot of money. But I'm going to be honest with you, that $100 a month increased and I was able to add more money, 200, 300, 400, 500, and where I was able to have 11 months of saving. Mind you, I'm a single woman, so I live by myself and I had to pay all these bills. And I think there's also this, um, I don't know, this thought, and it was for me, oh, if I'm really saving, that means I can't have any fun. That means I can't really travel and I love to travel. That is a complete myth. Pay yourself first. Put some money to the side, no matter if it's 15, 20, $25, and give thanks for that money. I'm really big on gratitude. Be grateful that you can put that money to the side and watch it grow. So no matter what happens, we want to be prepared as much as possible to just, you know, keep our futures thriving at all times. As always, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at American Star TV. And if you have any special hacks about your finances or what you do, share with the masses, right? Each one, teach one. And personally, I want to know because I want to evolve and do better every single day of my life. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye bye.